we're back. Back to Gen Z Solutions. Yeah, now that we've talked about ourselves, what about you? What about your career now? Um, yeah, so basically I wanted my my major is finance, um, my minor, I'm minoring in management information systems and um, trust management. So I guess the spark to go into uh, the business field and, and more specifically go into finance. Uh, my dad majored in finance, uh, graduated with a bachelor of science in finance. Uh, so and he's been trading stocks basically since he's been in college. Um, so he always talked to me and my brother about stocks and, and I never like, maybe until recently, never really fully understood it. I knew it was like owning partial, like owning parts of a company and, and sort of trading it, but I didn't understand like some of the, the more finite details of, of, of investment banking and, and trading stocks. So I learned a little bit more, did more research, watched some videos, listened to some interviews, listened to some podcasts. And I was like, wow, this is actually really interesting. And it's not just, you know, looking at graphs go up and down and, and clicking a button. It's, you know, it's about knowing a company. It's about research. It's about customer relationships. It's about um, relation, geopolitical relationships because, you know, there's a lot of implications when it goes into is this company going to succeed or is this company going to fail? You know, and it's not just binary. Uh, so for me, someone who's like, ask a lot of questions, someone who's interested in pretty much everything I see, I was like, wow, I mean, this is one of the career paths where I can profit off of being interested in a lot of different things. And, and I was, personally, I want to go into private equity, maybe a little in the, in the future. Um, because you're dealing with a lot of wealthy people's money. They don't want some, you know, freshman in college just throwing their money around. So hopefully in the future, I'm going to go into private equity. Um, and and that's that's basically just, you know, you're buying stake of, of you're just basically venture capital, but as a corporation, I mean, not even a corporation, but as like partners, you're buying cap or you're buying stake in um, upcoming ventures. So uh, for example, like if you watch Shark Tank, those guys are venture capitalists. They're buying stake in up and coming companies with the hope that they become successful enough so that their stake that they bought would end up paying off and you get a good return on investment. And for me, you know, there's, and I was, I had the pleasure of getting to listen to Damon John um, earlier this year. And he was telling, he said, well, not telling me, but he was telling the crowd, he's like, you know, as a venture capitalist, when you're investing into a company, you're not just investing into the company, you're investing to, everything the company stands for. So that's the owner, that's the customers, that's the the board, that's everyone that makes that company who it is, that's what you're investing in. So that's also cool to me because I, I'm a people person, I like talking to people and it pays to be able to read people and know what type of people you're dealing with. Because if you're going in business, you don't wanna be going into business with someone who is gonna inevitably lead you to your downfall so for me i just like man this is interesting has a lot of factors and and it can really pay off in the future so that's why i chose you know the 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 field i'm going into and why i'm going down the route that i'm going wow that's that's great speaking about companies though like you're already investing time your future to working with other companies why different i am so different i am is I I wanted to build something like different I am for this purpose right here, what we're doing. Uh, we're young adults and we're having conversations that we don't usually get to have with other young adults. And that's the purpose of different I am because we're supposed to be fostering and cultivating the ideas of the next generation and of the future. So that's why we're here. Um, and the reason why I think that, that it's needed is because, like I said, we don't talk about this enough, you know, and not not enough people are serious about the future and, and whatever that future is for them. They're just not serious about it. So I wanted to make different. I am to attract people that are serious about the future and we come together and we build the future that we want for ourselves and for others. So that's why I, I wanted to build different. I am with everyone that's a part of it. Um, and. And I hope to just see it grow and, and turn into something that is going to be 
you know, that's going to build leaders and it's going to be good for the next generation, especially. I'm pretty sure that's going to happen in no time. <laughs> what do you think about Different I Am? Um, so I am part of Different I Am, again, um, like Josiah was saying, because the conversations that we can have are really great. And um, a lot with people our age, I've noticed around me that um, they don't really seem to talk about themselves in terms of what they want to do in life. Um, you know, in class, you, you're kind of forced to talk about it. So I feel like outside of class, outside of projects and, and advisement, that sort of thing, they talk more about um, things that are going on with them in everyday life. Mm. And it seems like there's a, a little lack in um, thinking about where they're headed towards and why they're doing the things that they're doing. So, um, and I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of um, people in college get major changes. Not that it's a bad thing, but um, there's kind of a going with the motions that happen. Mm. And then they decide, I've been doing this for a while. And it's not just the school that I don't like. Like, you know how classes aren't fun all the time when there's a lot of work and things like that. But they'll realize that it's not just doing a bunch of work and homework and assignments that they don't like. It's the actual subject that they decided to study that they don't really care much for. So they'll go into something else. Um, but I feel like if early on we can encourage um, young people, even middle school age, to think about what type of things that they're good at and how they want to add to the world, then it it grows, um, it will plant the seed so they can learn about themselves and grow and decide what they want to do. So being a part of Different I Am, we can talk about our experiences and our thought processes and kind of have gears turning in other people's minds because sometimes you'll have what it takes in the back of your head unless you hear someone else talk about it, that part of your mind doesn't get activated. And for you, like, you know, we, and that's a very good answer because, you know, like, like I said, there's just not enough conversation about the future. Um, you know, a lot of people are encapsulated with what's going on right now in the present or what they're going to be doing this weekend or what they're doing tonight or what they did last night. So it's good to have a, a place where you can come and talk about the future and what what your goals are in the long term and how we're going to reach them. Is that that's even more important is how we're going to get there. Um, so for you, you know, you're a senior, uh, you know, you're you're a little you're one of the younger guys in the group. So for you, what what brought you towards you know joining Different I Am? I just feel like um, teens in the society Gen Z, we don't really like focus on the bigger picture mm. and planning for the future, investing in the future, stuff like that. So I'm just trying to like take a different step, something different. Yeah. That's, that's cause yeah, you're right. You know, not enough people have a, a, a macro view of what's going on. You know, a lot of people are, like she said, only focused on the, the small things going on in their life. And, there's nothing wrong with that because you do have to make sure everything's in line, uh, make sure your mental health is right, make sure your your personal relationships are right, you know. So, but it it's also good to have a, a, a better understanding of what's going on around you and how you fit into your society, your community, um, whatever that is. Um, and, and it's good that, you know, we're here and we're trying to push that narrative that there is something bigger than just us going on um, and and what we do has real implications on the rest of the community and rest of the world around us so can we take a question from the audience why the name different i am or is that different 
So, I mean, I think everybody's different, uh, but I think the different that we are is, is like we said, we're, we're different in the way that our mindset is different about how we go about um, just existing. You know, we exist on a, on a level of what can we do for others rather than what can we do for ourselves. And, and that's really what, that's really where the difference is. And, uh, and if, if, if people do have that mindset and you do have that look on life come, you know, we were looking for new members and we want new members with that same mindset that, that are, that are looking for to better their communities and those around them. And what different I am means for me is that we embrace diversity and we're able to celebrate the differences um, across in individual people and work well together and use our differences to complement each other. And so talking about different I am, you know, we, so I'm from Newark, Delaware. You're from Newark, Delaware, yes. correct? Yes. And you're from Nigeria. So, yeah. so give us a little bit about that. I mean, that's, that's very different. So, I mean, you know, so what does different I am mean to you being someone who is actually an immigrant to the country and is still, you know, doing good, a uh, captain on your basketball team, looking to go to college. So give, tell us what different I am means to you. To me, different I am means bringing together diverse Gen Z, I mean, young people mm -hmm. to express themselves about what's going on in the community, how to fix the solution <laughs> <laughs> of the community. But yeah, that's pretty much that I like is that um, we get to hear viewpoints from um, slightly older individuals, our mentors who come in. Um, and one of them was Serena Joy. She told us about her um, her journey in college and how she likes to be a motivational speaker and she likes to share her her life with people and share her experience and encourage people. And she does that through poetry and motivational speaking. Um, we've had other speakers too. And it really helps not just to have conversation with others who are around the same age group, but listen to slightly older individuals who have experienced some of the things that we're experiencing right now and have their own individual take on things. And um, so as we grow different I am, we're going to add more to our social media. And this is um, a part of it, making these Gen Z solutions shows. And um, we also wanted to talk about social media use within people of our age group. So um, with me, I, I'm not very active in social media. I mainly join social media like Facebook and Instagram so I could have some sort of online presence or online presence because I'm a graphic designer and illustrator and um, I want people to be able to look me up um, if they hear about me or they're looking for an illustrator or graphic designer so they can see a little bit about who I am and have some of my work up on the my website and a little bit on my social media. So sometimes I'll go on there and I follow a lot of artists on Instagram. So I go in and see some of the things that they're doing for inspiration and like videos and pictures that they post. And I like to see some inspirational quotes sometimes. Um, but other than that, I tend not to be on social media that much. Maybe like once a week is normal for me. Sometimes more, sometimes not at all. But sometimes I'll go about three weeks without being on social media. So it really fluctuates for me. What about you, Ogie? 
Uh, me being a senior in high school, still a young boy. <laughs> I'm always on social media. Taking for me, it's just like a means to get information. Because, like I said, I'm a really busy guy. It's just I don't I don't go on ABC check the news or anything like that. I just see things on Instagram. And I say, oh, this is really happening. So. I actually did a, I just finished up a uh, project today on uh, a research um, essay on a, a topic of our choosing. I wrote about social media and like people's addiction to their phone and whatnot. And I can tell you guys both right now that you guys are in the minority of phone <laughs> usage. On average, people use their phone four hours a day. They check their phone, I, I want to say 80 times a day in 10 minute intervals, okay? So that is a lot of phone usage. And, and what was really interesting to me is that social media has been designed to be addictive. So there's something called uh, infinite scrolling, which is, oh, yeah, where you, can, that. where you can just keep on scrolling and just keep on, and I don't know if Instagram took off the, um, they, had, they used to have like this little, uh, user interface like i don't even know what to call it but it was like a a breakage in the feed to show you like oh you're you're up to date you you know you're up to date for the past two days you're up to date for the past one day so i don't know if they still have that but they used to have it but infinite scrolling is basically where you just keep scrolling keep scrolling keep scrolling and it'll just keep coming up with new new um you know posts uh new tweets new pictures if it's instagram so it's to keep people keep coming back. And so there's never a lapse in, in, in as you would say, information. Because even though it's not, you know, educational information, it's still you're, you're taking in new information, new people, uh, new, you're looking at the profile name, you're taking in more information and it just keeps people there. And as you look at your phone, check a text, next thing you know, Twitter's open, next thing you know, it's an hour later and you're still in the same spot and that essay still has like one word. <laughs> so, you know, social media and, and binge phone usage definitely has a grip on Generation Z. Um, and there hasn't been much done to sort of curve that either. I mean, we have screen time on iOS came out with screen time where you can check, you know, how often you're using your, your phone and what apps you're using the most. But like, even if, you know, I put my phone on it. So at a certain time, it's downtime where like every single app on my phone besides like message and phone call is actually locked. And I would have to like unlock it, which is, even though it's just a couple buttons I have to press, usually that's enough incentive just to close the app and just, you know, not even go through with it. Um, but, you know, some who may not have that same self-discipline to stop themselves to keep going. So like, how would you like what what advice would you guys give to teens or or young adults that are struggling with managing their time as well as balancing a, a healthy presence on on social media uh me personally i don't see social media as this bad bad thing mm -hmm. i see i see an advantage there and I see some disadvantages. Like you said, addiction is a big disadvantage on social media. Uh, but you can you can make money off of that. Yeah. Yeah. People, people get people live life off of that. People travel just to post their stuff on Instagram and say I've been to this place. But yeah. as students, as young uh, Gen Zs trying or should you go? You should like know that there's time for everything. You shouldn't just be on your phone every day, all day, and not work on your life. Mm -hmm. You just listen to other people and just focus more on other people's life. That's not okay. So do you guys think we're we're more disconnected now that that social media and and you know phones have entered the equation? Like, do you, like how do you guys feel about? interpersonal relationships in the digital age? Uh, I feel like, yeah, we're more disconnected. I actually, um, I actually kind of differ from that viewpoint because I see uh, phone use and I actually, since 
even though I don't go on social media a lot, I use my phone all throughout the day and um, it's a lot. So I pretty much binge use my phone, but um, I use it to make notes for myself on ideas that I come up with artistically and um, to-do lists. I have a bunch of to-do lists on my phone. I've gotten into the habit where I make a to-do list of for every day. And the name of the to-do list is the name of the day. So I have a to-do list titled Wednesday. And then um, it's everything is automatically comes up in black text. And then when I do that thing, I gray it out because it might be something that I have to do next week. And then I'll just bring up that same day again and backspace it and delete it or um, turn the text back to black. But another thing that I do is um, I will contact my boyfriend a lot. Like we'll text or call. Um, so you can stay in touch with people over social media. And I feel like we should be using social media as a tool rather than trying to divert from it mm. and cut it off completely. Because as there's advancements, there's going to there's gonna continue to be advancements in technology. Um, but as there, as there are advancements, as the people within the generation of the advancement the important thing for them is to figure out how they want to use it in their life, um, if they want to use it. So um, they could decide maybe I'm not disciplined enough right now and I'm not in this state of mind and this time of life where I'm ready to use this and just not use it. Um, but there could be people who decide, well, I'll only use it for this or I'll only use it a certain amount of time throughout the day. Um, I know that social media has been very helpful for upcoming artists, businesses, stuff like that. So it's good to connect with people, especially in the fields or related fields to careers that you're thinking mm -hmm. about doing and to use it to network, to use it to learn from other people, like listening to other people's stories and gaining insights on how to do things, um, going on YouTube, figuring out how to build things or how to simple things like, um, I didn't know how to use oil pastels before I started working on my mom's project. And um, if you look at the illustrations now, probably wouldn't be able to tell that um, I didn't have any lessons. I went on YouTube and figured out how to use oil pastels. It's pretty much like using a extra soft crayon. <laughs> so it was very hard to work with at first until I got the hang of it. But it's like social media and um, new technology until you get the hang of um, being able to create a balance, it's going to be seen as an invasive thing. So really focusing on balance and how you can use the things that you already have to improve your life and how you can bring other newer things to um, harmoniously go with those things and not be invasive. Mm. Oh, that's a big lesson. <laughs> Gen Z. Yeah, that was that was a lot to take in though. It was good. But uh it was really nice talking to you guys. It was a very good conversation. Um and I look forward to the next one. Uh, so this is yeah. Generation Z Solutions. Uh see you next time.